Sunday School Leader. Let's look ahead. What's coming up this Sunday? We are in the unit entitled How to Pray. We are in week four. It's called Praying for Ourselves out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, and Isaiah 38, verses 1 through 6 and 15 through 17. And the point of the lesson is take your needs to God daily and trust him to answer. Well, just a heads up, this week I'm going to take a couple of tangents. I'm not going to go kind of a verse-by-verse verse or thought-by-thought thought commentary like I sometimes do. I've got a couple of things I'm going to bring out that hopefully you'll see how this all ties together with the lesson. And it actually may be a line of conversation that someone in your class may bring up, so it may be good to be prepared for this. Now, our lesson this week deals with a king who is dying, and he prayed for his healing. As a result, his life was extended by 15 years. Now, in our church, and you know, to me, this is really unusual. We have two people that uh, were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. One was about five years ago or so. The other one was about two years ago. And, uh, you know, that's a diagnosis. Uh, when you get that, it's usually um, you get the diagnosis and then you're told, go get your affairs in order. Go get your house in order, as, our, uh, as, as Isaiah told Hezekiah in our lesson this week. Families and churches banded together and prayed for these two people with uh, pancreatic cancer. Prayed very hard, and both of these people now are cancer-free. Now, here's the thing. Both you and I, we all know about people who died of cancer. Some were very uh, extensive periods and pain of pain and suffering. Some were very godly people who prayed whose churches prayed. And so the question comes up, why? Why, does the, why, why? why did this happen? Well, before I was in ministry, I spent about 13 years as a mainframe computer programmer. And, you know, computer programming is very logical. It's cause and effect. If this, then do this, else do that, right? And so if I wanted to do something specific with this data and manipulate it somehow, I could, is very logical. I just had to know uh, the, the right sequence of, of steps to, to go about to manipulate that data. And if something didn't work, I couldn't just chalk it up to, well, you know, that's just the way it happens sometimes. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. No, a correctly written formula should produce correct results every time. But when it comes to prayer, it's not that cut and dry, is it? You know, I, I can't say a specific set of words and expect that same result every time. And the reason is because there's somebody bigger in the picture than me. And of course, that person is God. And he's the one who actually determines what is and is not going to happen. So that leads to the question that's in the student guide. And that is, why bother? God knows everything anyway. We're not informing him about anything. Why do we even bother to pray? He knows the future. Uh, you know, and I don't even think he puts us in positions to see how we will react. You know, you may have heard somebody say that before, that, you know, God put this uh, before me as a test to see how I would react. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> he's, he's not sitting back wondering how you're going to react. He already knows how you're going to react, okay? So that's not the case either. So why bother? Well, a few things. First of all, we're commanded to pray. The Word tells us we're commanded to pray. Let me give you just a few of those verses. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer. Ephesians 6.18 uh, tells us to pray in the Spirit. And then we're in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, the model prayer, you know, when you pray, pray like, you know, pray in this manner. All right, so here's another thought. Jesus prayed, didn't he? This is, this is the creator himself. This is God in the flesh praying to the Father. If he felt the need to pray, we probably should too, okay? Even the night before his crucifixion, he was praying there in the garden with his disciples uh, he got alone many times by himself, especially early in the morning, to pray. So we should as well. Also, prayer is, is, is about communication. It's not just listing our wants before God. It, it's a communication. It's a two-way communication. It's a relationship builder. 
Here's something that Adrian Rogers once said. He said that we don't pray to impress God. We don't pray to inform God. We pray to invite God. We, we, we invite God into our lives. Now, when it comes to prayer, many Christians will err in one of two extremes. They will pray only for themselves, all right, or they won't pray at all for themselves. You know, like God's got too much to handle without me bothering him with my little measly concerns. Okay, both of those out. Both of those are wrong ideas. Now, in the Matthew passage this week, Matthew 6, 11, tells us, give us this day our daily bread. We should look to God to provide for us daily. And when I think of God providing for daily provisions, a biblical example I think of is, is, is those Israelites wandering in the desert for 40 years, and they relied on God every day to provide food for them. Now, I don't have a lot to say this week about the scriptures in Isaiah. Your leader guide has a lot of great background information on that. But uh, we can see in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 2, So I don't have a lot to say this week about the scriptures in Isaiah. Your, your leader guy has a, has a lot of great information, a lot of good background material on that. So make sure and read that. Get familiar with the, with the background on what's going on here. But we know that Hezekiah was 25 when he began ruling as king. And he reigned for 29 years. So that means he was 54 years old when he died. Now it says in our scripture here that God added 15 years to his life. So if we take that... 54 and subtract off 15, we see that the, the time frame here that uh, or Hezekiah's age was, he was about 39 when this happened. Now what Lifeway calls the point of the lesson really is the point of the lesson. We need to take our needs to him and then trust him with the results, whatever they are. We need to have that same attitude as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know God will deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're, we're not going to alter. We're not going to change. We're not going to bow down and worship your God's king. We also have that same attitude as Job. <clears throat> In Job 13, 15, he says, Though he slay me, I will still hope in him. God can take my life, and I'm still going to hope in him. This also echoes what Isaiah says in Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2, uh, listen to this. Somehow I've, I've missed this over years of study, or maybe I've glossed over it, I don't know. L listen to this. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. Now, like I said, I've somehow overlook that because here's basically what that verse is saying good people die but no one understands why no one understands that god is actually protecting them from more evil and those that walk in godly paths in this life will find peace when they die that reminds me of uh, philippians 121 when paul says to live is christ and to die is gain I'm living for Christ here on this earth. I'm, I'm walking in a godly path. But even if I die, when I die, it's going to be a gain for me because I get to be with Christ. Have you ever seen on Facebook somebody post something like this? Uh, my child was deathly ill. We took him to the ER and, and now he's, he, he's much better. Or I was in a car accident and it totaled my car, but I only walked away with a couple of scratches. And very well-meaning people will write things like, isn't God good? Okay, here's the thing. Yes, that's true. God is good. But as the saying goes, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So even if I lose my job, even if my spouse walks out on me, and this is terrible to say, even if my child is taken in death, God is still good. It's not just when he rescues us from those from those terrible things, but when those terrible things happen to us, God is still good. There's a song by Mercy Me called Even If, and I would really encourage you to, to look at that and listen to those words if you don't already know it. Uh, depending on your class, you may want to play that for the class because even if 
these things happen, I'm still going to trust in God. It's easy to, to praise God when things are going our way. But when those terrible things happen, that's when the rubber meets the road, as J. Vernon McGee would say. So here's a question to ask your class. How would you react if you, if you knew you only had 15 years to live? How about 15 months? How about 15 days? Would it change your perspective on things? Would you do things differently? What would you do differently in, those, in that shorter amount of time? Well, when you're praying for your class this week, take some time to pray for yourself, all right? It's okay. Not just when you're sick, not just when you need a job. Pray for that deeper understanding of God's word and pray for a deeper love for people in your class, maybe even people not like you, okay? Thank you guys. I appreciate you all very much.